What's going on fam? It's your favorite entrepreneur, Base and Mental. It's another video for my Black Lives Matter series. Just a heads up, it will not be edited. It's going to be raw, real, and my honest opinion about everything going on. And in this video, we're talking about all Black Lives Matter, not just Black Lives. We're going to get right into it. Um, to me, honestly, this argument should be redundant. Should be redundant. And this might even be in my shortest video yet. But uh, the fact that we need to have this conversation is a problem. Like, we're already talking about one disenfranchised people. We really don't need to try and force another one in there. We really don't. But since we got to have this redundant conversation, or what should be redundant, we're going to have it. Black Lives Matter. All Black Lives Matter came from Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter people, from what I understand, hurting and almost killing someone of transgender. Now, I want to make this very clear. I in no way, shape, or form agree with what happened. I do not remember who. Unfortunately, it was months ago. Uh, it sucks I don't remember, but uh, I wish I did. I don't agree with anything that happened to that person. Uh, if you've seen any of my previous videos, I honestly don't care what you are. You're still human. I, I don't care. Not in a rude way, but uh, you do you. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to say it like this. Take it, how, take it however you want. I believe in God. To me, God preaches unity. If you're against unity, you're against God. I am not against God. I am all for unity. I may not agree with what you do, but I will love you despite it. I, in the end of it, I had to come to a conclusion for me that I truly don't care. If you're male and you're respectful, you're cool, you're loyal, you everything I look, I check for in a friend, we gravy. If you're a female and you're everything I check for in a female friend, we're gravy. If you're a transgender friend and you're a transgendering from male to female or female to male, as long as we can carry some respect, we can have some conversations, have a bit of fun, I don't care. If you're 100% homosexual, I don't care. Just don't force it on me and we can call it quits. We can still have fun. You're still cool peoples. If you're a lesbian, I probably have more fun with you than homosexual just because I'm not a big fan of guys. But I like girls. I've always been more comfortable around girls. So the fact that I can have a sort of guy-ish conversation with a girl, all the better. Like it doesn't, I don't care. It just, even if I couldn't, we can still be friends. Like we can just respect each other's boundaries and call it quits. Like I do not care. You're human. You're still a person. We can get along. It's not that big of a deal. But it pisses me off when black people want to argue that all our lives matter. And if you saw my last video about cops, you would see why this irks my soul. Because they suffer from them too. This is not even a different side of the same coin. This is the coin. This is the same fucking coin. It's black people. It's just black. Now, I don't know the situation what happened with the, the, the lady slash gentleman in Atlanta. I'm thinking maybe the only thing I can think of that would cause such a reaction is someone was uh, maybe on a date with them and they never told them that they were transgender. That's the only thing I can think of. I'm not saying that's an excuse to whip someone's ass, but that's, 
that's what I would expect to happen. Like, that's, that's all I got for that. Like, after that, I'm kind of at a loss. Like, I don't, I don't really, maybe it's the men can't be women thing, so they beat the hell out of them. To, I guess, beat it into them that they're men or something. I don't know. I don't condone it. How are we going to fight for All Lives Matter? And this is showing that we don't give a fuck about our own lives. I mean, we don't care about our own lives. It's, it, it's a, it puts a chink in the armor of Black Lives Matter. It gives everyone an excuse to then go, oh, well, y'all don't even like to deal with your transgender. So why do we show, why should we care about your plight? Why should we care about your argument when your argument is, if turned on itself, ineffective? I get it. It's just, to me, stupid and redundant. They're still black. Black Lives Mattering is basically saying everyone matters. No one needs to be mistreated by the police. No one in essence should be mistreated by each other. So why is this an argument? Because clearly there's a problem with people and transgender people or people, black people specifically, and black transgender. Why? Not completely sure. I have a lot of theories, but either way, it's stupid. They're black. Why is that important? If you're not dating them, you're not having sex with them, they're not your family, why do you care? For me, I don't care. I just said that. You're a person. If we can respect each other, we can get along with each other, Try to understand each other. I don't care. If it's too much of a problem for us to be friends or understand or whatever, then we ain't got to be friends. As simple as that for me. Why do you got to beat the hell someone close to beat someone close to death during the time when you're trying to say you care about your life? I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. Like that saying. You are a reflection of me. If I wouldn't hurt me, why would I hurt you for your choices? It's stupid. And honestly, if that happened to one of my family members that I know is transgender, I'd be done to the black community as a whole. Yeah, I'm saying it out loud. And I'm saying it on the internet. Because it's stupid. It's genuinely stupid. Stupid. I don't care about, I've said this in the, I don't even think I've said it in other videos, but I'm going to say it now. I don't care about a political party. I don't care about a political agenda. That's stupid too. I do hate that it's manipulating something into something it's not supposed to be. I hate that. Because now instead of us, we can't ever just talk about humanity for black people. We all, it's always got to be a political debate. But... It doesn't seem to be quite of a political debate when it comes to any of the spectrum of sexuality, including pedophilia. So, um, I don't know how y'all feel about pedophilia, but I'm, I'm not, hell no. Um, n I'm in no way, shape, or form okay with that. I'm not. There is nothing you can say to me that'll make me okay with that. Nothing. I nothing you can say that makes pedophilia okay. There's nothing you can say to me that makes rape, molestation, any form of inappropriate sexual activity without actual and knowledgeable as well as willing consent okay. You just can't. Not in my head. No. I'm not even gonna try. No. Pedoph fuck that. Pedophilia is a, is a no. Hell no. All the other ones, I can understand to a point. That makes sense to me to a point. I get it. I can understand that. That's cool. But I am not willing to accept it because I have seen 
lesbians, homosexuals, and transgender treat me way better as a person than actual heterosexual people. But I don't hear anyone really mentioning that. I know transgender homosexual people who treat me better than a pastor. Let that one sink in. A pastor whose literal job is to invite everyone in. And you can't do that because you think God has a problem with it? If God didn't allow it. He allowed free will. Which means there are a lot of things God is accepting as a result of it. We don't like it. But we need to learn to deal with the result of our mistakes and problems, issues and choices. As much as we say we like free will, we really good at showing how much we hate it at the same time. And with this Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter stuff, all black, I mean, with this Black Lives Matter and All Black Lives Matter stuff, same thing. They're all black lives. There shouldn't have to be a all black lives matter. It shouldn't. But there is because of this dumb, dumb stuff. I, why does there have to be an argument with us about us mattering to us? Why is that an argument? Why can't we just give a, give a fuck about each other again? Why? What, what is so complicated about that? Why? I, I don't get it. So for me personally, if we, if, if we can't accept everyone in it, then this is a faulty movement. It's no point or purpose of having it if you can't accept everyone outside of them being heterosexual. They want the same life you have. They want to be able to be comfortable in their skin, live how they want to live, be with who they want to be with, love who they want to love, live to however long they think they or believe they're going to live, and ride it on out till death. Why the fuck do we got to make it such rocket science? It It's unnecessary. And even me cussing in some of these videos is unnecessary. It just it feels like the best way to get across my point. And it does oftentimes make my vocabulary seem a bit inadequate as if I don't understand a dictionary or an encyclopedia and how to fix the proper words where instead of saying fuck, I can say no one gives an adequate care. I love to create a paradox around a life mattering or a life not mattering based on its history and its understanding and its uh, influence on the rest of the world. I can say all of that, but fuck just feels a lot better and seems to be a bit more stress relieving for me to say in terms of this argument. It doesn't, again, make sense to me that we can argue that our lives matter and then beat the crap out of our own lives. Because the way I see it, we all black. It's proven science. All they did was move to a different area in the world and their bodies adapted to it. That's all that is. So in actual wokeness, we're all black. We just have a lighter complexion. But if you want to, you know, keep one eye shut and say you woke, all you see is black, white, Hispanic, Brazilian, Irish, African, Jamaican, Haitian, Honduran. You see all of those, but you can't see that they all come from the same damn people. But since no one wants to recognize that, we can't even recognize that black people are all black people. Why? It's not hard. I really think this is a stupid and redundant argument. But I have a sister who I believe is in process or has transitioned who has to deal with this BS because People won't let her just live her life. And I call her her out of respect for who she chooses to be now. That's not that hard. 
I know someone who I work with who's transgender and one of the coolest people I ever met. Love talking to the guy. Super cool. We talk about everything. We talk about Black Lives Matter, uh, cops' lives mattering, political life mattering, uh, transgender life, gay life, slavery life, uh, life before slavery in Egypt, and what life like is on the West Coast, and I mean in the West Country, well in the East Country, well depending on which way you go, it's West to East, but in the other countries. Like, we talk about, we, I have some of my best conversations with this dude who used to be a female. And some of the people who treat me the worst are those people who are male, 100%, and female, 100%, and are heterosexual in their walk. Now, I don't know if you've been to church or whatever, but I always hear everyone has their own path to walk in their own journey. We just all taking our journeys in the, at the same time. And I always hear, you have no right to judge someone else's walk or journey with God. So why is it okay for you to say that, pastor, and your people beat on, or your congregation beat on someone who's slightly different than you? And for anyone, anyone who should understand this is black people. The most disenfranchised people on the planet since life. And we don't understand transgenderality? Really? Like that to me is just stupid. And it ruins the argument. And you're literally showing you don't give a hell about your own life. So, if you are transgender, I love you. If you're homo, hetero, pan, uh, I believe it's bisexual, uh, demisexual. Whatever sexuality you believe in, live and walk in, cool. I don't care because that's what you choose to do. I'm a heterosexual male. I'm going to be a heterosexual male. But I'm not going to penalize you for choosing to be whatever form of heterosexual, uh, lesbianism, transgenderality, demiality, whatever you choose. That's you. That ain't me. Love you for it. Don't try to push it on me. Call it quits. Now, in reverse, I am not going to push my heterosexuality onto anyone. And the community of black people need to stop that too. We can't force anyone to be what they truly believe and feel in their bodies they're not meant to be. Yet we want people to walk in their purpose. Sounds like a hypocrite. Walk in your perp. I, I cannot tell you how many people I've met gay who have treated me better than people who are straight. Some of them I went to high school with. Some of the best people I've met in my entire life. One of them I kind of considered like a big sister at one point. I still find her deathly attractive. But that's just me. And she was tall. Real tall. She was much taller than... I, but I, I just I still found her attractive. And she was a lesbian, 100%. Ask me if I care. Still to this day, I think she's one of the most attractive women on the planet. And you can't tell me otherwise. I care about good people. That's what I care about. Be good people. That's it. People love gray areas, but when it comes to me, when it comes to you trying to make an argument against cop police brutality, you can't brutalize your own people in the process, folk. That don't make sense. It doesn't. It's just stupid. And it, it, it shows a chink or breakdown in the armor that's protecting you, that's making the argument valid. It literally literally destroys the argument. So I don't know how best to say we need to accept each other 
for what we choose to do and love each other in spite of it. Or at least in love each other in spite of our personal beliefs. Cops can learn to do it with black people and their personal beliefs and biases and why they feel like they need to pull a trigger on us all the time. Black people with why we need to calm the hell down sometimes when we're getting stopped and pulled over by the police. I just don't see how effective it is to ruin someone based on what they believe they are sexually. Will I debate you on it? Absolutely. Because I have a insatiable curiosity. So if I don't understand certain things and it bothers me enough that I feel like I need to understand, I will ask every single question I can think of. And I won't think twice. I'll think about how I can filter it to make the person I'm talking to feel better with talking to me. But I'm going to ask all the questions. Because for me, seeing the extremes of a lot of things helps me make sense of it all. Like seeing masculinity and then femininity. All the things they've dealt with on each side of that equation. And then looking at uh, all of the... All of the spectrum in the middle between um, masculinity and femininity or uh, male sexuality and female sexuality. And understanding where they are in those extremes in the middle make, helps me make sense of everything else in between. Except pedophilia. Not accepting it. I don't care. That one I truly give no fucks for. Like I'm not accepting that. That is unacceptable to me. No, there's no paradox, time loop, oxymoron, nothing. Now, I'm all Black Lives Matter, and Black Lives Matter is an oxymoron, but there's nothing you can say that'll make me okay with pedophilia. Nothing. Just absolutely nothing. Not happening. I just... We ruin our arguments by saying trans lives don't matter. Especially black ones when they got it the hardest already by being black, one, two, changing gender, three, possibly being gay or not gay, four, we add more pressure that we don't need to add. They trying to live too. Furthermore, and I'm surprised I haven't addressed this yet, even if people have multiple ethnicities, it is in the constitution that y'all also love leading to about equality and all this other BS that says what if there's anyone with split with at least I think a fifth of DNA that is black, you are black. Do you know how many more people would then actually be considered black? And a lot of the biracial people. Nine times out of ten when you hear biracial, it usually means 50-50. Which means 50% of your DNA is black. And if it's your father, that's the, generally the ethnicity you're assigned. So if you either have black blood in you, or your father's black, you're black. And yet we have the nerve to tell our own that they don't have the right to speak in this argument? Are you stupid? Yes, they do. This Black Lives Matter stuff started out to protect black people, but everyone is saying they're attacked by the police. So every life has to matter. Including the biracial folk. They're the same thing. Everyone wants to be all, oh, you biracial, you don't get to, you're stupid. Yes, they do. They're black. If they have black in their DNA, they're black. It's really that simple. If you look white, probably shouldn't say the N-word. I'm just being honest. I'm being real about it. Probably shouldn't say the N-word if you look like that. But if you don't look like it, you can probably get away with it. You may have to proceed with some caution, because some people may think you're a different ethnicity that shouldn't say it. But until that point... Now, I, my, I do have an issue with people who feel like they're black. That one's a little different for me. 
because I can feel white all I want, but I can't escape what my skin looks like. I can feel like an Oreo, but an Oreo, the original Oreo, still black on the outside and white on the inside. And guess what everyone's going to pay attention to? What's on your outside? And if they're going to pay attention to that, guess what you're considered? Black. I know, it's a fun little equation. Like, for example, there are some Africans who just probably think we over here wasted our time. And I've met an African detective, and I believe an African firefighter, uh, an African banker, I've seen African people driving their cars for Uber and Lyft. And a lot of them have come to realize a lot of the BS that black people have dealt with over the years once they get here and they start experiencing it for themselves. And I've met a couple who actually said they thought we were over here BSing and wasting our time and complaining about freedoms that we say we didn't have. Then they got here and found out, oh, this is a thing. This is actually real. And it is a thing. And they, act, they then go, okay, I get it now. I understand it. It's not hard. Jamaicans, unfortunately, if you come to America, you're black. Only way we can really tell the difference is probably your hair, stereotypically how much weed you smoke, and your accent. Outside of that, if you don't speak or say anything, you still look black. Haitians, too. Probably quite a few Spanish cultures, Spanish-speaking cultures. I believe Brazilians can get confused as black. There are a lot of, uh, if I'm not wrong, Indian. I want to say uh, Hindu or, or I want to say Pakistani. or uh, There's so many different Indian names from actually India. Um, there are Native Americans. They fall into that same boat, too. I... I understand the truth of we're all human, we're technically all black. The Constitution puts a lot more people to want black because back in that time when it was made, white was white, it was pure, and you had to keep it separate from all the germs and the dirt, which were black people. I get it. I just don't agree with the argument of black lives matter. Yet, we destroy our own lives while trying to argue that lives matter to the police. And in the process, we look like the criminals they depict us to be. I, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. I just, I'm not, I'm probably not going to get it. And I don't want to. It's not, it should, this argument is stupid. It's redundant. It's irritating. It's almost stupid to have. But I understand why it needs to be said, why it needs to be said. If you want to lead with love, I truly believe you can't, can't keep your conditions of what someone needs to love you with first. I can't say I love my sister who is transgender, but as long as She's transgender. I can't love her. No one hears how stupid that sounds out loud. I can't say to my my uh, transgender coworker, I respect you and I love you as a human being, but I can't love you as long as you continue to say you're a guy. Yet, you want to preach that you love God and unity and bringing people together and are quite literally spitting in his face, lying, being a hypocrite, which a lot of my oh so holy art than thou Christians really love to do. Oh, you're all, um, you're all abominations. That's not that serious of a word. It just sounds bad. It just means highly disliked. It's not that bad. All that says to me, based on what I understand and know of the Bible, they have a harder time of getting into heaven. I think it might be easier considering they seem to be better people. 
At least in my experience. I am not saying all of them are perfect. I'm not saying all of them are the best people because there are quite a few I've met that piss me off to no end and are very irritating and constantly want to try and force their way of living onto me. It's stupid. Like, if I'm not wrong, pride was meant for everyone, not just gay people. Hence the spectrum of sexuality, the rainbow. It was meant for everyone to be a part of. But of course, People's love comes with conditions of you having to stay heterosexual and be what you don't want to be. And I dare someone try to say they haven't had that experience. Because I know you probably had at least one point in time before you were 18. If it wasn't from your family, it's probably from your friends. Or it's probably expectation you created of yourself. It's a thing. I just, I'm not going to accept, like, I just, this argument is stupid, but it's necessary. I understand that. I can respect that it needs to be had. I don't like that people who choose to try and take on the world and what they believe is the proper vessel for themselves need to be killed or murdered for it. Because if that's the case, we're no better than the cops we're saying are brutal, brutalizing us. If that, case, if that is the case, then we are no better than the cops that we are claiming are brutalizing us. We are no better than the system that's keeping black people oppressed. And we're no better than the black people that are oppressing black people. Because that's exactly what this is doing. Which means you now become a poison to your own antidote. You want to give the antidote to the word of anti-racism and anti-non-equality. <laughs> but treat a group of people unequal because of how they choose to believe they are. And try to walk their path as best as they can. Like any other human being on the planet. I don't get it. Probably never will. And I'm okay with that. But... I am, I am and I've always been an all-loving person. I'm not going to sit here and say my love don't come with conditions. Because they do. I am not dealing with stupidity. Don't have, try and say, oh, I love you, but black people and Black Lives Matter is a Nazi movement. What? No. It's not. Nazis were killing people on sight for what they look like. We ain't killing no one for what they look like. We're asking people to join the cause because of what they look like. But we're being compared to Nazis. We're supposedly training people to hate their own country. No, that's how they're choosing to react to the truth. It's really that simple. They're choosing that, oh, I've been lied to. Well, I guess my entitlement isn't what it's supposed to be or actually is, so you lied to me. For example, I, I don't agree with tearing down these statues and tearing down Confederate flags. I don't. Because to me that allows the enemy we're trying to get rid of to hide. It gives them a band-aid to muster up an infection. But we, in this country, or, or what I've seen in a lot of this country, and even most of the world, we love band-aids and we hate surgery. We love band-aids and hate surgery. We love the statues being torn down, the Confederate flags being fussed at, the minor policy changes in companies. The, the people trying to accommodate for black, uh, black entrepreneurism. Me? I don't think it's going to be done until the Constitution's amended. Because that's the foundation of the country. Yeah, you can write an amendment to amend an amendment, but if you amend 
that new amendment, the old amendment, is then in effect. I'm going to say that again. You can write a new amendment that then cancels out or overtakes an old amendment. But if you take out the new amendment that stops the older one, then that older one then is effective all over again. So the Constitution, that amendment itself, needs to be changed. It needs to be. And then, because you're trying to shake a foundation, now the whole house has to come down. And everyone knows that's a lot on insurance. Everyone wants to say, we love black people. We love y'all in this country. But won't give us the reparations you promised our ancestors. You love the band-aid. And accepting the, okay, we'll give you this for this. But won't accept, I'm not taking nothing less than that surgery. I'm not taking nothing less than changing that amendment. I'm not taking anything less than you doing something to protect my people. I'm not taking anything less than you having to dig, scrounge around, and fight and find the infection and pluck it out. And unfortunately, um, that hasn't changed. It's just been new people to point the target at. Unfortunately, they happen to be transgender. Like, part of me doesn't agree with transgendered bathrooms only because of, uh, that can open up a lot of worms. That can can open up a lot of worms. In the heterosexual bathroom as well as the transgendered one. Or ones. Could it be effective? Absolutely. You'd probably have to have someone guarding the bathroom door, though, because people. But it could also be effective for anyone who's transgender. Or anyone in general who wants to get to know someone who's transgender. And y'all just happen to use the same bathroom together. <laughs> like, y'all, people don't want to accept someone's self-acceptance. Unless their self-acceptance is what they want them to accept from them. People don't want to accept someone accepting themselves unless what they're accepting is because of someone else's input of opinion on who they are and who they need to be for whatever conditional reason that they need to make themselves feel better and not the person choosing to make a choice. I have a respect for anyone choosing to be transgender because you're choosing to basically kick tradition in the face and say, this is me. I'm going to be it. And if you don't want any parts of it, you don't have to be around. And they even got to get rid of their family sometimes. Like... I had a conversation with my mentor and I, my emphasis on this whole thing is choice. And I, I'm, I have so much respect because of this choice. And my, my mentor doesn't think that m how I look at it is effective enough to someone's entire journey. But I think that choice is what kickstarted the change in the journey. Choosing to go through a painful experience of changing your body at a later date when it's harder for your body to heal from it. Just to feel more comfortable in the skin you're in. Just to get after your dreams and your purpose. Is a profound respect to me. I call my, my sister Shiro. Because she chose... To go down one of the hardest paths of life that I've ever seen for anyone of color. And she's standing tall. So, with that being said, I got love for everybody. The fact that I have to have this conversation or argument to me 
is embarrassing for my people. But I love you regardless. To anyone who feels uncomfortable in their skin and you feel you got the wrong body, I understand that. I had those questions about myself too. So I'm not going to sit here and act like I've never thought, oh, I'm a, I'm a girl in a guy's body. No, I just learned to, I'm a guy. It is what it is. Gotta make moves now. I'm, I'm a human. I'm still alive. Let's go. So I say all of that to say, I love you regardless. Peace. Blessings. Love you forever. And I hope you can continue to love yourselves. And hopefully, everyone else can come around to loving you as well. I'm your favorite entrepreneur, Basic Mental. Real name is Rashad. And I love you for being you. I just hope you can accept me for being me. Peace.